So we were notified by the uh, State Emergency Operations Center to come out and do some uh, COVID testing for this uh, retirement home, basically. And it's a lawn care facility for some elderly individuals, and they want us to come out and just do COVID testing. We'll be doing swabbing, um, and it's combined with the Air and Army National Guard, part of the 8th Surf P. And today we'll, we'll sample some of the staff members as well as some of the uh, residents of the facility. So Surf P is a unique uh, mission set. It's not a specific unit. It's a uh, compilation of different um, units that come together to provide the mission set. Um, the Air National Guard, which is interesting in that regard, their medical element is assigned to this as their own mission. So the rest, the Army has a uh, background, whether they're a mechanic, a cook, um, a couple different uh, military occupational skills that help them um, on, that they ex exercise in their units versus what they do in, um, in this mission. On this mission, you have uh, a lot of FEMA training, so it makes us uh, tie in with the incident command system so we can respond to any FEMA emergency that we get uh, activated for. I think everybody's motivated to come out and help the, the people of Colorado, truly. I mean, that's where their hearts are. Um, every day, everybody shows up, they're motivated. It's not like, oh, it's one more thing to do. It's, we get to get out and help Colorado. Um, and that's, that's truly it. They, they get to give back to the community which they're, they're working for, so they enjoy it. All right, so real quick, we're almost on the ball. It's almost time to go. We've went over PCCs, PCIs. We've done a walkthrough. We've ensured that we have the proper PPE and the decon in place. We've ensured that all of our teams have been briefed. We've ensured that everybody knows what's happening here, what the two stages and what the two sites are, correct? Oh, everybody right, is right. comfortable with that. <laughs> hey, you want to do last bit? You may have to take separately. You can really want to do Looking good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Feeling good. Yes, Captain, they do. There he is. Hey, Captain. <laughs> So, um, you know, obviously we send the teams in, um, they go through their process, they'll come out here to get decon. Um, they have their suits on, their gloves, taped, they're all taped up, ready to go. So they come out here, we'll go through three phases. I don't know if it's easier if I show you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, this is kind of the decon tent set up. Um, they funnel in through this way. Um, they'll stand up right there. The first phase is a wash down. They'll wash their boots, wash their gloves and stuff like that. We keep the wash off their uniform just so they don't get soaked. Um, they'll step in and then we'll cut the suit off. Cut the suit off. Um, and once their suit's cut off, they'll come up front here and they'll get their mask taken off. Um, they'll clear their mask, make sure you know they're good. Then they'll step up here and get their uh, mask actually wiped down. And then pop that off. And then take from underneath your chin. Is she the last one from team one? Pull it up anyway. Yes. And now you're three you from, from medics. Oh, okay. okay. They didn't switch out. Uh, right now, uh, we're going on a couple months of doing these swabbing missions. Here in Aurora, we are we have three sites set up at this facility. One of the sites is strictly for um, employees. They, they have about 250 employees that we are testing today. Uh, with that, there's 100, about 140 residents. Um, with three sites, we have one strictly for employees and then two dedicated to uh, the residents. Uh, also, when they come out of the hot zone, they must go through a decontamination process where we combine a bleach and water solution, diluted enough to where it's not going to affect skin or eye irritation, but enough to kill the virus. Uh, when we send our individuals in, they are in their next-gen paper suits as well as their paper mask and uh, orange rubber uh, resistant boots. Uh, they also wear two pairs of nitro gloves. The reason why we wear two pairs is because the top layer gets dirty. Uh, after swabbing, they change the top layer, revealing a clean layer underneath, and they put another layer over that to swab the next patient. That way you're not 
putting any particles and that way you're keeping not only ourselves safe but also the patients. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to CDPHE and all the sites that we've already done because they it's been nothing but gratitude. Every site that we go to and it's great to, for us to be able to come in and help alleviate any of those problems that they have. It's just uh, you really get to see the good side in a lot of people during this crisis. So I'm Amanda Hedinger with the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. Um, my role here is essentially a liaison position. I work uh, to be that piece between the Guard as well as my agency and the SEOC um, to coordinate all of our needs out here to include logistics um, as well as with the PIO. It's actually been really great to be able to be out here in the field working with, with the, the Guard. Um, they do know their jobs really well. They know all the things. Uh, essentially, they're advising me half the time on uh, infection control procedures and stuff like that because this is what they do in real life. So um, it's been it's been a rewarding experience for me. So without further ado, we want to give Chaplain a chance to give a blessing before you guys go in. The last thing I'll tell you is do good things. We know it's dangerous, but go in there and be safe. Take care of yourself and your teams. Feed the information up. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. God, I ask that you look upon these incredible men and women and that you recognize that many of them are dealing with many issues. Issues at home, issues in relationships, issues with children, issues with health, issues with finances, and yet every single day they come to work with a smile on their face, ready and willing to do this incredibly holy work. I ask that you bless each and every one of them and that you grant them your shelter and protect them from any disease, illness, such that they remain healthy and able to continue this mission. All this we pray in your great and holy name. Amen. Amen. This is an incredible opportunity for these men and women to actually do what the National Guard does. The National Guard are citizen soldiers who are taking care of their neighbors. And we train and we train and we train and sometimes wonder if we're ever going to actually do what we are trained to do. And this is an incredible opportunity to really be out there helping our community. And I know the community knows it and they appreciate it. As far as what we're seeing, what we're seeing are men and women who are dealing with all the stresses and issues that every American is dealing with right now. And yet they're showing up to work every single day with a smile on their face, fully committed to this mission and to the job they have, which is truly remarkable when you realize that the danger that they're putting themselves into every single day Sure, they have PPE, sure we're concerned about safety, and we take care of all that, but that doesn't change just how stressful the environment they're working in, and yet they do it with a smile, and they do it with incredible integrity. 
it's a, an amazing opportunity to be out here with these uh, men and women. Um, it really is, uh, for me personally, I feel I found, I found the right home and I'm here to support them, whatever they need. Um, and, and to me, that is the role that I've um, fi finally able to call home. And that's really a great feeling. It's those relationships that ultimately is the real job because that's how you get that entree to find out what's going on in their life and to really help them. In a sentence, our mission is being able to make sure that people who are struggling can get back into the fight. And whatever that takes, if it's going to be a spiritual issue, if it's an emotional issue, sometimes they just need a little counsel. Uh, there was a, 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 an individual here, a, uh, a soldier, who was struggling emotionally with not being able to give an answer to some of the residents in nursing homes who were testing positive. So to be able to help her and counsel her on what her role really needs to be and what, how to come for people who are grieving and what do you need to say Some, and recognizing you normally don't need to say anything. Just being there, there, your presence is everything. Little things like that. And then she was able to get right back into the fight. That's really the job and it's tremendously satisfying.